Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. And today I've got, I wanna say how many, let's see, four fall farmhouse pumpkin DIYs. Everything's got a pumpkin in it, so it makes me super happy. And I wanna, I'm so excited, so let's just jump in. First one is a cute little green one. Well, it's not green yet, but I got this wood plaque from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. And honestly, I bought this plaque because I hadn't seen this particular shape in a while, but I wanted it. So then I decided I see a pumpkin. All right, took the sticker off and then I grabbed my favorite, this is like my favorite fall green color. It's Spanish moss folk art. I will be getting myself a very large uh, bottle of that soon. And then my first try here, this is my brand new fan brush. Um, I'm gonna try, you know, to do some sort of design like a fake type of plaid. Now I got this off of, uh, from our favorite painter, Tracy. I've seen her do it many times. And here I was like, let me just try to do a cute little white plaid looking design on the front of this. And I was realizing as I kept going, now this is real time, so I wanted you to guys see how it was coming alive for me. At first it just looked like I was dry brushing it. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't hate it. But then I was like, okay, well, let, instead of taking the paint off of the brush, let me just leave it loaded. So I was kind of dipping just the edges into the paint there and then dragging it up and down. And you'll see as I do more, it doesn't necessarily, I don't know if it ends up looking like plaid, but it gets enough of the, of the, str of the stripes looking in there, it makes me happy. So I just kept going back and forth and trying to do something that was resembling as close as I could to what I thought looked like plaid. <laughs> I just wanted the lines is what I wanted. So I just kept just adding different amounts of paint to it. And I was at some point, I was like, Whitney, this is going to end up looking way too, there's going to be too much white on here. But it, it came together and here I was going to stop. And I'm like, no, I just, I want a little bit more. Just give me a little bit more, please. And then at some point, I think maybe the next swipe or through, I got enough of the horizontal stripes uh, with the brushes of this fan brush, it made me happy. Now, I don't think you can duplicate this with any other brush but a fan brush, so I had to go get me a fan brush. This is my brand new fan brush. I got, I believe I got it at Michael's. I think I got it at Michael's. I don't remember where. It just was the cheapest one I could find. <laughs> so I kind of like how it looks. It looks a little, you know, high up -y. Now, I want this to stand up on its own, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my miter shears here, and I'm going to put it on this marker, so 60, de I think that's a degrees. 60 degree angle. I'm going to take one of those tumbling tower blocks that we all love and have seen from Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to take one of them. I'm going to lay it on its side and I'm going to line it up with just the corner, the edge corner you'll see here. And since it's at a 60 degree angle, once we start pushing our handle down, these things cut so smoothly like butter, like butter guys. It was like butter, which now I'm hungry. But anyways, came off so smooth and then just watch boop, isn't that cute? So now basically that's going to be our little kickstand. Well, you're not going to really kick it, but I mean, you can if you want. I, I don't suggest it. So make sure you get your you know angle right. Now it still had, it still was a bit wobbly. It wasn't exactly the best, you know, come, come idea to come with. So I was trying to test it standing up. So what I did was I cut another tumbling tower block into a shorter piece to put this here at the bottom. And that's that kind of solved my issue. Now I didn't want it to stick out from the front, so I did cut it pretty short. And it's still kind of like, I don't know, like a little bit of a messy hodgepodge thing to do to get it to just stand up. So I kind of rigged it. Uh, but with the magic of hot glue and, and editing here, we've got to clean up all of our goopies and lumpies. <laughs> uh, make sure you paint it. All I, do is I painted it over, you can't tell. It looks great and it stands up. It is a bit unstable, so I would still put this in a tear tray or lean it up against something because it still might fall. Just saying. <laughs> now these sticks I've used a couple of Halloweens ago. I made uh, have a four part series with some skulls and I used one of these, these sticks on a skull, but I figured I have a lot left because it was a pack of a hundred. And I wanted a more natural look, so I kind of just lined these things up on the back here, and I used three of them. And these are going to be our stem. So it's going to stick up from the top, and it gives you that natural look. It's not like I'm looking for a natural look as I put these on my fake wood pumpkin with my fake fingernails. But anyways, it just is, it's that nice, like, outdoorsy look. So again, if you need to, go outside and grab some sticks outdoors. You know, these are perfect sticks, so in any event, get you some sticks. I'm going to use, uh, I, I hot glued them down, but I'm also going to use some of my uh, craft tape here. The craft tape is very, very helpful. It also helps just give you a, that added layer of security. Now, we need to decorate it. So I know, do you see a pumpkin yet? I'm not absolutely sure. I see a pumpkin in everything, so maybe I'm not the best judge of pumpkin character, but 
technically I see pumpkins and everything. So I tied some raffia to the top, but the raffia was just a little bit too stiff. So I went and I had to get my spray bottle, sprayed it down, got it nice and kind of pliable and manageable, and I'm kind of moving it all around, put some more water on it, because I need it to be... I need it to be looser so that when I'm tying it in a, around the top of our new stem, I want it to, I need it to, to agree with me and go the direction I need it to go. So here, you'll see me, I water it down a decent amount and it dries pretty quickly, but this stuff is ancient. I've had it for years. So, you know, it's probably, and I live in the desert. So I guarantee you it's been robbed of all its moisture. All I did was just tie a knot around the top of the stem and then cutting it all off. So it gives you that kind of like scarecrow, raggedy look. I just wanted it to be just a, a real messy type of look at the top. I wasn't really going for a bow. So now I've got some sage bushes and some other extra little pieces I got laying around. And what I did here was I heated that back of that leaf up with my heat gun. And then you can bend your, because that doesn't have wire in it, but you can bend the plastic and then that kind of makes the, the leaves go the direction you choose them or the, you know, the way you want them to go for you. So that's the best thing to do. If you don't have wire in the back of it, go ahead and warm it up with a heat gun or a blow dryer or something. Here's a little extra piece of pitberry, uh, pitberry garland I got at Dollar Tree. It's a green and white pitberry garland. I've had that extra. All I did was wrap that around a glue stick. And you guys will see me do that again later on another DIY. And then I wrap that around the stem. I didn't glue that down. And then now I'm just going to take a couple of little, you know, bits and bobs and little flowers and cute little accents I'm going to pull off of a fall bush that I've had for, for some time. But I do know Hobby Lobby sells those every year, the, that little white papery type flower. And then I'm just going to add these little accents in. Like this is the funnest part for me, I think, is just adding these little extra tiny details that, you know, it takes a little bit of extra time, but it's so much fun watching it to come, come together. And then you just get to look at what you did when you're done and you're like, wow, I made a cute little collage of happiness. Oh, and then I stuck a little piece of uh, eucalyptus there on the side. I was just going for all green. So do you guys see pumpkin or am I just crazy? I mean, I, I see pumpkin, but I see pumpkin. I see pumpkin all the time, guys, <laughs> literally. So I think it's really cute. It's a cute little, little small accent. You can put that anywhere. It can be a shelf sitter. It can be a tear tray, uh, you know, added piece. You guys tell me what you think. I'm in love with her. I think she's so cute. Just a little wobbly, but so am I. I love her. She's so cute. So now, our second DIY. You guys remember this one? Probably not, but I did right here remove a chicken from the top of it. Dollar Tree had the, has these in different uh, themes. There's one with a tractor. I took a chicken off of it, made an ornament. So I got these two like uh, tabletop or wall decor pieces from Dollar Tree. And then these are some candlesticks, seven eight inch whole five piece candlesticks. I got those at Hobby Lobby on sale. You guys just saw those in the haul I just did. And then here's a random pumpkin I got out of a group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create like a small little riser, but it'll be custom for specifically an arrangement. Now the pumpkins aren't gonna be perfect, aren't gonna be permanent because I will transition this into Christmas, but we're just going to glue our little square on top of our other square. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to paint everything white, but I don't necessarily wanna paint, I don't have to paint most of it, but you'll see here. Once I get this removed, I'm gonna put the candle cup on there with my hot glue. I was looking at my hot glue the other day and this is a particular five pound box that I get off of Amazon all the time. It's AdTech brand glue. And it does specifically say you can use this on wood and metal. So I've been testing things out and you guys know it, it's solid with wood. I don't necessarily have to use wood glue. Now on some things I'm still using it, but for this one, I've made this, obviously I'm, I'm now doing the voice recording for it. I've did this a couple days ago. I've went in and periodically checked. I have tried to pull it apart. I have tried to ruin my own project. I can't get it apart. So I'm sure, I mean, over time, maybe if it gets dropped in the right way, but still that AdTech glue is no joke. You can use it on, on wooden items. So, and that was wood to wood contacts. Of course it was real wood candlestick. And then of course a particle or pressed wood little uh, wall decor item there that I glued it to. But in any event, it worked great. So, I mean, with your own judgment and choices, move forward accordingly. I plan on using it a lot more in the future. Now I'm just putting a white coat on everything that needed it. I didn't put a coat of paint on the top of the larger square because it has like a wood grain to it. I think it looks pretty. You'll see it in some closer shots uh, later on in the, in the uh, pictures. So now I'm moving to where I wasn't going to paint the pumpkin. I also, if you can tell here, have already put some little tendrils on it, but I end up taking those off. So I didn't waste your time having to show you making, making, having to show you me making them twice. 
So here, this poor pumpkin had went through the ringer. I painted it like four or five times, and I'm still gonna paint it again, so you'll see me do that again. I'm not just jibber jabbering through. I take a piece of extra styrofoam that I have left over in my stash. I bake a little square, and I'm gluing that to that. So now I'm gonna turn my little, I guess, riser floral bucket there into more of a floral arrangement slash pedestal. I'm gonna fill in my empty space with some Spanish moss and just enough to cover most of the sea through. Your, the pumpkin's gonna cover most majority of that styrofoam, so don't worry. But make sure your Spanish moss is just kind of there enough to cover all the all the empty spaces and so now with a piece of a, a dowel or a chopstick or whatever you got near you i'm turning my pumpkin into a pick and then i'm, I'm cutting it at a diagonal so i have a sharper edge to stick into that styrofoam now you could stop here i mean i think that's adorable add some some ribbon what have you but i have this pitberry garland i believe i got this off of craftoutlet.com a couple years ago but here's my technique i take a glue stick or something circular and just wrap it around there pull it off and then voila you have a little tendril so i made three tendrils for this um not necessarily tendrils for the top of a pumpkin but this was just cute to put these in as an accent and also i was doing more traditional colors for this whole video so i did do a lot of oranges and the bright orange berries on this literally make me happy. I know in my whole home I'm doing lots of greens and stuff. Well, technically not the whole video because I did do my first pumpkin was green, huh? Wasn't it, guys? Anyway, second thought. There's the three there's the three little squiggly, tenderly happy happy thoughts that went into that. And I'm still not happy with what I'm looking at, so I'm going to add uh some of these leaves and a couple of these acorns from this pick. This is from Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure if they have them because I got this many, many moons ago. You guys will see me using lots of stuff that's very old and I am embarrassed, but I will show you just how old it is by the tags. This particular one, I have no clue when I got it because I didn't look. So I'm going to pull these things off here. And here's another warm up your leaf with your, your heat gun or your blow dryer just to get things to kind of maneuver the way you want. It gets the creases out. And then I'm gonna add probably, I think, a few more. So um, they, they were coming out of the pick so easily. I also added a leaf to the top, and then I had to use one of my little uh, dotting tools or stylus tools to make a hole in the top of the pumpkin. But it starts to come alive. And again, you guys, this particular project, I was a little, eh, you know, just a little meh. It's like something's just not right. It's not turning out the way I wanted it to. Maybe it's because, you know, the, is the is the base too white? Am I using the wrong colors? But I just wasn't happy with the pumpkin. There was something about the pumpkin. It just wasn't, it wasn't making me happy. So... I just keep adding and adding here. You'll see me add a couple more things, but then I'm looking at it like hmm, something's wrong. Here's where I pulled those out. So I used a green floral wire. So here now I'm going to take out this white. This is white crafting wire. I got this at Michael's and during a Christmas clearance so many years ago, and I still have a lot left. So here's another tendril thing, same as the pit berries. I'm wrapping these around a paintbrush, and then I'm using a pair of pliers to get the sharp part at the end to curl over. And then I'm just going to insert that into the same little holes. It's sharp enough that you don't need to make a hole, but I did put the glue on the bottom through my glue gun. Didn't have to squish the trigger of the glue gun. Just put the wire into the, the, the tip of your glue gun and you'll be good to go. So here's a second one. Just keep wrapping until you think it's long enough because even after you push that in there, you can maneuver it and manipulate it and get the tendril or the wires to go the way you want. You can form them. You can curve them down or pull them out to kind of stretch them out a little bit. And that's, I think, is my favorite part about using most of these wires. But this is just literally craft wire. And you can get away with it because it is a smaller pumpkin. So you don't necessarily have to have like a, a larger gauge coated wire or the pit berries. Because the pit berries I would use on a bigger pumpkin as my tendrils. This wouldn't have this wouldn't have looked all right. It would have looked a little weird. So I'm done with that, but I'm still not happy. So what I did was I stole some berries from the garland, and you see me here with my pliers, putting some glue on. I'm gonna put those next to the to the top of the pumpkin by the leaf, and I'm loving it. But something's still just not, you know. There's something just not, uh, like not there. So I decided to paint my uh, stem brown. This is just a folk art. Actually, I think it just says real brown. And then I used what was left on my brush to kind of dry brush a little bit around it to put a little bit more different of a color in it. And I have to watch here, I'm not sure. There, that is a damp paper towel. So I've kind of just 
smudging it in there just to give it a little bit more of I didn't want I wanted a lesser harsh brush stroke on there I'm talking about this like this is a piece of art <laughs> but then I became happy with the pumpkin and the streaks on it there's still some white spots on it but I think I'm happy with the way it looks what do you guys think you guys tell me everything can be improved upon and of course even if you don't like something yourself someone else is going to fall in love with it so everyone's got you know Every beauty's in the eye of the beholder. You guys tell me what you think. I love that little candlestick on the bottom. It's just like a tiny little pedestal. Anything you can think of, just grab something small and use it as the pedestal. It's so cute. It really is. And all that can come out because none of it's glued in and we can change it into next seasons or other, other subjects. All right, so next in is a sign. And this is a cutting board sign from obviously our Easter, uh, it was our Easter specials or items that were for sale during the Easter time at Dollar Tree. But Dollar Tree does have some cutting boards, some new cutting boards out for fall. I've seen them online. My stores do not have them yet, but they are super cute. You could always grab those. Now, instead of ripping this off, I decided to use painter's tape because I've seen where a lot of times if I'm trying to pull something off that I want to keep and reuse, it ends up destroying it. So I used painter's tape. Now I just kind of put that on all four sides here. And then what what I'm going to tell you is be careful. Don't push down too hard. And then there's that folk art real brown color. So I am going to paint the square in the middle where all the cute carrots are just a brown, solid brown. And I believe I did three coats guaranteed. I think I did three coats. Those carrots were still kind of showing through. And then even after that third coat, I mean, I got a good solid color on it. Even after that third coat, we're looking at, you could see some of the indents, but the problem lied in lies in I kind of pressed down on my um, painter's tape a little bit too hard so it was almost pulling the paper up and a couple pieces you see come up there on the tape I was able to use my finger sander you'll see that in a moment and I was able to distress it enough to where you don't notice it but there were a couple pieces like here and there that I'm like mm, I hope I didn't ruin it in any event we're ready to move on we are going to use that dollar tree stencil is so cute i did not get to use this one on my other project because it didn't fit so now it's like i have to use this so what my plan is is i'm going to center it i'm going to place it in here and we are going to put a pumpkin in the middle so it looks like it's a farm fresh pumpkin sign now i'm putting the the painter's tape up there very gently that's just to hold the, the stencil but i'm also holding the stencil myself i'm not just relying only on the tape and if you guys remember back, I did a Dollar Tree bottle cap with uh, the other stencil, the other farm fresh or farmer's market stencil. And I accidentally ended up ripping the feet off of my chicken. So the stencils aren't really that sturdy, but they are very good. I'm very happy with them, especially since I am a, a stencil uh, beginner. I am not very good or experienced with them at all, but look how crisp that came out. And I didn't use anything on top of it. So now we're moving on to the little pumpkin I'm gonna put in the middle. This came out of a pack of a bunch I got at Michael's a uh, year before last. And what I wanna do is I wanna put a pumpkin in the middle, but we need it to have a flat side to it so it looks realistic, not realistic, but so it looks like it belongs there. So I'm not cutting it in half exactly. I'm just cutting the back portion of it off. And then here you'll see that's the idea. I kind of placed it right in the middle there, but it's more, how do I say this without sounding? I'm kind of getting all over the place here, guys. It's at an angle. So I have it diagonally at an angle and I made sure I left the stem in because I want the stem to be shown as well. Now we're moving on to painting it. Don't like this red, this orange color, but this spiced pumpkin from Folk Art, or is that Folk Art? I, I was too quick. That's a spiced pumpkin color. It is beautiful and I love it. Now this sucker took four or five coats. I'm not going to make you sit through me because I had to, then I had to, <laughs> I put so much time and effort into this little baby pumpkin that it's ridiculous. So I actually, have, it's become part of the family. Let's put it that way. Here's it dry after all the coats I put on it. And here I'm going to show you, look how it used to look and look what I did to it. It's so cute now. <laughs> Like now I'm proud of it. It almost looks like when you grab from the grocery store, but I needed to add more to it because it was just too flat. So of course I'm doing it mostly out of frame. I added some more of that real brown and then I took my folk art chalk, white chalk paint, added it, kind of smeared it around, added some more, wiped it off, added more, wiped it off. It was kind of like a wet paper towel kind of thing. So it just was just having at it until it made my eyes happy. And then I painted the tiny little stem so it wasn't so shiny. And that was just to get you know, the fake plastic look off of it, if that's what you want. Oh, and I forgot, apparently I put some white paint on it too. And at some point I'm gonna actually show you what I'm doing here, there we go. I glued the stem back in and then now I'm like, look it, look how cute it is, look what I did. It took me 20 minutes. <laughs> took me 20 minutes to change this little tiny one inch pumpkin. But look how cute she is. 
I love it. And my husband came in and he goes, oh, that's cute. How'd you do that? I'm like, it's magic. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so I wanted just to, to kind of like make it look like it was like a little nest there. So add a little bit of Spanish moss to the bottom. And now I'm going to make our bow for the top. I was going to tie something around the handle, but then I decided just to make a regular bow. So we're going to take a awareness ribbon shape and you'll see me there. Pinch it in the middle. Just bring it down and pinch it in the middle. I'm wrapping some twine around it and then tying that in a, in a square knot. So left over right, right over left, make your square knot. And then you got like your classic little bow shape. And this is what makes me happy. At, at first, okay, ignore that twine bow I made because that doesn't go into the project. It ended up being a little bit too much. So that actually went in my stash, in my junk bucket. You guys will probably see that in a future DIY. So if you stick with me, which I'm very happy that you guys are all here. If you stick with me, you'll see that again. So here I'm gonna take some picks from Hobby Lobby. These are picks I've had over the years. I've seen them carry them multiple years in a row, but I'm just adding leaves to the sides. I'm going to kind of make a small little tiny arrangement here, but I'm not gonna go too overboard yet. <laughs> but. Again, if you guys have made it this far through the video, I want to say thank you so much for sticking with me. And then um, I, I can't explain enough how happy you guys have made me, especially recently. I've gotten a lot of few people that have been with me for such a long time. And you guys are remembering things and bringing things up from videos I did like three or four years ago. And, you know, it's just it's very heartwarming to know that there's that many of you guys out there that really enjoy just watching me, you know, make something into a beautiful chaotic crafty bundle and then also listen and retain my jibber jabber because it's it's just it's humbling it's very nice to know you know i'm human just like everyone else and i have that with other other channels that i support and other artists that i you know watch and and um it's just it's very very humbling so thank you guys so much now I, was, I wasn't liking what I was doing, but then I added some Dollar Tree berries to the top, and then I added a bigger chunk of berries to the top, and then at the last minute I almost forgot to put the little thumbtacks in, and I'm using not a hammer to hammer them back in because couldn't get to the hammer, so what did I have? Something else that I can beat the hell out of. <laughs> what can I beat it with so it'll go in? Now this one, the hole was so crooked that I ended up having to make a new hole, so I grabbed a piece of, of a, I don't know, I grabbed some, some tool from Dollar Tree, ended up breaking it, grabbed another one, made a new hole, and then I was able to put the tack where I wanted to because it was just so crooked. So I kind of made my own new hole, and that's just it. I think it turned out great. I was a little concerned in the beginning that it was going to look a little cheap, a little, you know, off the, you know, eh, eh, it's cute, but I guess, eh, you could do what you did with what you had. But I love it. I love the way it turned out. And that ribbon is from craftoutlet.com from a couple years ago. It's got, I love the white pumpkins in it and the acorns. But also that stencil from Dollar Tree, I'm super impressed with it. I'm also impressed with the fact that I didn't mess it up. And that's probably like maybe the fourth time I've ever stenciled anything in my dang uh, experience ever with stencils. So I'm glad that I grabbed I'm glad I grabbed it for a dollar twenty five because that's gonna be used a lot. You're probably gonna get sick of it, but in any event, I love it. You guys tell me what you think and have you used a Dollar Tree stencils? How do you guys, you know, are any of you guys stencil fiends like I'm about to turn into? So last one here now this one is i don't know if it's my favorite but i love it so i've got three of these ovals from dollar tree they're just the oval wood plaques they carry them pretty much year round i had one of them already painted i planned a project a year before last and never did it so i'm going to grab these two natural ones i'm going to unpack them and what we're going to do is we're going to decoupage these really pretty napkins i just got at hobby lobby they are gorgeous the sunflowers and then the white and orange pumpkins literally make my pumpkin heart sing i love it so i'm going to grab my regular matte mod podge and i'm just going to coat one entire side not necessarily heavily but just a decent amount you know nothing too horrible and i'm not very experienced with this either this is usually where i get bubbles and problems so i used a brayer i've seen many people do different techniques i used a brayer or a roller or whatever and instead uh, here it looks i'm a lot happy because there's no creases from the napkin there's no bubbles so i'm going to use my finger sander and i'm just going to rub them off the edges as though i'm sanding it kind of instead of using scissors or a knife and then what i did was i did both of my my ovals and i let the bottom layer dry then I came back and did a top layer so that it would seal in the edges. That seemed to be the best way to do it and I don't have any bubbles, I don't have any creases, and they look great. So I honestly can't remember what technique I got, who I got that from, but they said let the bottom level layer dry first before you add the top layer and you won't have bubbling. Amazing. 
So you can see here my premise of construction is the white piece will go in the middle. So then there's your three, you know, your three sections of a pumpkin. Kind of trying to, look, I have a wood piece here that I'm trying to make it even. It ends up not being even. But let me show you this, you guys. These are, hold on, let me see. It's, I'll bring it closer to the camera in a second. 12 inch, uh, come on Whitney, paint mixing paddles, birch wood. I got a hundred pack. I don't know if this is really that good of a deal, excuse me, but there's no measurements on it. I, I purchased them because I was planning on doing all these paint stick videos a year before. Um, I did get these in 2021, um, but they are in my Amazon shop. Should you choose, you want to take a peek at them. Everything in my, if you see me using stuff I get on Amazon, it'll be in my Amazon store. I get a small commission if you decide to purchase any of those. So every little bit helps my uh, channel continue. But I was just using this as a support for the back. I wanted to make sure that I had something on there more than the craft tape because I've been using that craft tape for a lot of items and it is good for things that have already have a sturdy construction, but these three pieces did not exist together and all I did was put hot glue underneath that first uh, white piece in the front. So I'm using a little bit of wood glue, a little bit of hot glue, and I'm putting these uh, this half of a stick I cut in half. So this is a paint paddle stick and then I clamped it. So now this right here, I had made something, I believe a uh, year before, no, last year. And I cut the handle off of one of these, uh, what is this? This is a 21, 21 inch paint stick. So these are like the five gallon paint bucket stir sticks. You can get these. I got this little three pack, I believe either at Walmart or Lowe's, I'm not sure. So I cut the, the, the handle off of that a long time ago and this was perfect. It worked out perfect for the handle. Of course it was in my junk bucket. So I ran across it and became so happy. I used my Americana gel stain and walnut and that's it for the stem. So also, while my wood is my wood glue is drying off to the left here, I am now going to show you in real time how careful I am because I'm about to bring out something that I say I would never ever have. It is covered in absolute glitter. Covered in absolute glitter. Normally I don't buy these things, but you're gonna see in about five seconds. Also, I have a big bag full of them. I think there's like eight or nine in there. So be careful, Whitney, because this will get all over the place and I despise bringing glitter into my home. Look how much is on there. <laughs> I'm also, I'm having PTSD just looking at it. Look at the date on that tag. Again, embarrassed. That's how long I've had that bag in my stash. <laughs> and I guarantee I didn't pay $1.99 for it, but still. In my experience, what I have found is that these items that I loved all this glitter and all this stuff in the past before it became, you know, just a nightmare in the craft world is when you cover them in paint, they look like they're made out of sand or stucco. I did a Christmas thing last year when I had a reindeer, the, like the head of a reindeer and I covered it in, in chalk paint. Same thing, look, doesn't it, the, the glitter texture makes it look like it's made out of some sort of a stone or stucco and I love it cement and then you know some sort of a decorative cement or something like that so cover it in paint just be very careful i did not get that much glitter everywhere and i am now a happy camper so we are now going to put the stem on our little project ask me why i was trying to stand it up i don't know because basically i ended up putting a hanger on the back of this and i don't know that i i think i don't have the footage of it honestly i'm thinking of it now because i didn't put it in the editing but this is technically gonna be another stand-up item. Lean it against the wall, put it on the top of a tear tray, something like that. But anyways, I used wood glue, hot glue, and I taped the, a tape, I taped it on. <laughs> I used wood glue and hot glue on the back and we're putting the stem on. And now I, I originally wanted to cover these, the pumpkin in these little uh, half wood beads, but then I changed my mind. Now this burlap rope, it says 32 meters. There's the number on it. I believe I got on Amazon, I will need to check my Amazon, my husband's Amazon, because that's normally where we do all our purchasing. I think I got it on Amazon. Pretty sure I did. It is a thinner gauge rope than the nautical rope from Dollar Tree. And it's just a much more thinner and kind of neater rope or, or burlap, uh, burlap cording. Um, use anything you want. You could use thread, you could use yarn. I just really like the clean finish I got from this and it didn't fray too badly. So I didn't cut it until I was ready to glue that piece down. We're going to cover that part anyways, um, where, with the leaves and that we're about to put on, but then I did both sides. So you'll see me here just edging the left and the right side. 
And then that's what it looks like here. And again, now that I'm no longer scared, I don't have to take these outside to do this. You can get all the little fuzzies off without fear of a fire. And no worries, guys, don't come after me. I had water with me. I was being responsible. It's, you know, you're doing that in short bursts. You're not letting, you're not holding the flame to it. So please be careful or take it in the backyard just to be safe or take it outside somewhere. But um, now we're going to add our topper. We're gonna to put some burlap flower, uh, flowers, burlap uh, leaves. These are fall leaves I got. Now the tags on the top of these say 2020. So that's not as bad. I did buy those in 2020, which I don't know how I got them in 2020. At least that's what the tag said. I may have bought them in 2021 because everything was closed down in 2020. So I'm pretty sure that was just overstock because nobody was going shopping for months and months and months. So here I'm taking my Americana gel stain on a paper towel and I'm kind of distressing the leaf because it was a little bit too stark white. And then I decided to do the same thing and use that gel stain to put some ribs or some veins in my little pumpkin, put some more detail on that white piece. It was a little bit too plain and too white for me. So I needed it to have some texture and some color on it. And I love how that happened. That was a happy accident. I hadn't planned on putting any of that stain on the middle piece of that pumpkin but I am in love with how it looks now. Absolute love with how it looks. I'm gluing my two burlap leaves down and then now I'm trying to just get the proper placement because that, that uh, leaf that was the glitter leaf, it's a, it's a harder plastic, it's not flat. So I needed to find something to fill the space behind it in order to get it, you know, to have good support. So I grabbed some Dollar Tree ribbons and I got excited over that spool for some reason, so I'm keeping it, it'll be in my junk bucket. <laughs> and what I'm doing here is I'm just going to tie a bow out of, not even really a bow, I'm cutting two strips of this ribbon, I'm dovetailing the ends, and I'm pinching it in the middle. It's not even a bow, it's just two strips of ribbon that are being cinched in the middle. Squeeze them, uh, pinch them in the middle, and then tie something around them. And this is a piece of yarn I had off to the side from when I made my yarn, my crochet pumpkins. So cut two strips of ribbon, pinch it in the middle, tie them in a knot, used a square knot. And then from there, I am going to grab it and I am, cause it, the middle of it will not show, glue that down to your project. So now I also have some texture and I have some filler. So now when I'm putting our plastic leaf on it here, it will have something to adhere to instead of just the flat burlap leaves that are underneath there. It needed to have something else for it to support. So in anything, uh, I don't know why I'm waiting to do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna tie a finger bow out of this. This is stitch ribbon that I just got at Dollar Tree. These these colors have been out for a little while, but they're fairly new to Dollar Tree. I've got the purple and the gray, and then I bought this brown one because it's a very soft brown color and I love it. So I made a finger bow. Now, if you need to know how to make a finger bow, there is a link in my description below to a specific finger bow video I made, a tutorial for it, slowed down so you can see and you can grab that down below in the video or sorry in my video description and so here i adhered my leaf down and now i'm going to put the finger bow right on the stem of our pretty little leaf here and that's it i didn't want to add a bigger bow i didn't want to add any florals i loved how it turned out i'm just going to go ahead and diagonally cut these edges so that the longer parts are in the middle and i love how it turned out this was some more like half i made some of the, most of these decisions halfway through making the project and i couldn't be happier with how it turned out it, it makes me so happy you guys tell me what you think and if you guys try to recreate something like this or you have your own spin on it send me pictures I, the best place to do that is an instagram i love seeing these things that you guys make and it's also very very flattering and very very encouraging to see that you guys gain inspiration and some of the stuff most of the stuff I see, if I, I, there's a, just a few people that send me pictures. I love every single one of them. You guys are all so amazing at it. Makes me so happy. <laughs> love it. This pumpkin makes me very happy. Now I did put a picture hanger on the back and apparently I did not have that footage, which is annoying because I specifically remember turning my camera back on to record it. It's just a picture hanger that I took off of the back of a Dollar Tree picture. So that's it, guys. There's my four little pumpkies, little punky projects for the beginning of uh, our fall, I'll, I'll say series, because I'm not stopping until it's time, or until it's time to go into, until it's time to too early go into Christmas, just like it's a little bit too early for fall. Technically, I'm in love with fall, so I don't think it's too early. But anyways, I love every single one of these. You guys tell me what you think. Tell me if you have any ideas or tips or tricks or uh, any requests. I love hearing all that stuff. Oh, that little green pumpkin makes me so happy. She's so cute. 
So thank you guys so much. I appreciate every single one of you. You guys have been great and awesome. I have a coffee page and um, I want to thank every single person that has bought me a coffee through my coffee page that's in the description and pinned to the first comment below. Um, should you should you feel inclined, you can buy me a coffee. Every little bit goes towards me reinvesting in my channel, buying supplies, keeping up my software, those types of things for editing. And every single one of you have been more than more than awesome in my eyes. So, and of course, if you can't monetarily support, that's never ever a requirement. Always appreciated, never required. Just do the YouTube stuff, you know, make sure you subscribe or even just commenting below a hi or an emoji that helps out my channel because YouTube sees it as though you're engaging and you like it and they'll suggest me to more people. That's what apparently is the, the, the magic trick to do now to get your channel to grow. And I'm really trying hard to see how far I can take this. So you guys let me know. Um, just say hi and we don't even have to say hi. Just put something down there like a little thumbs up or something. Who knows? But in any event, thank you guys all so much. I love every single one of you. You guys keep me going and, and you make my heart happy more than I could possibly explain. So with that said, take care of yourselves and each other. You're doing a great job. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.